us. We can never, and we'll never, we'll never know. I don't believe how much He's done for us until we, we see Him face to face and He'll show us all the times that He spared us a heartache or He spared us a trouble and all the things that He brought us through. So this song here just kind of says, "Thank God for everything that He's done." I don't think I have a copy. It's okay. I give you thanks.
A lot of this here, No. Sure do. He's more bald than I am. I like that. Brother Hitchens is more bald than he lets on. Oh my gosh. Uh -huh. He's just got a unique way of having those three hairs in his head. <laughs> um, yeah. He's sitting here tonight. But uh, all, 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 bald, all bald men have one up on the rest of the world. Because all good men come out on top. There it is. I need that. I want to read a few verses of scripture to you. And then I want to talk to you tonight. Maybe it may be the most important message that I bring in this camp meeting. God's the judge of death. But I know that what I'm taking tonight. The subject is vital to every single believer. In John chapter 6, in verse number 63, the Bible says, It is the Spirit that quickens. Now, underline those next, those next four words, or at least underscore them in your thinking. The flesh. Profit nothing. The flesh profits nothing. On our best day, with the purest of motives and the best of methods, if we're operating in the energy of the flesh and the wisdom of the human mind, it profits nothing. Go yonder to the book of Acts, chapter number one. In Acts chapter one, the disciples asked Jesus a question in verse number six. When they therefore would come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, without this time restore again the kingdom of Israel. And he said unto them, It is not you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part. Jesus ascended back to heaven. 120 men and women banded together and spent 10 days in prayer. That takes us to Acts chapter 2, verse number 1. This is 10 days after the ascension of Christ back to heaven. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now that does not mean that they all drove hundreds. <laughs> they were uni unified in spirit, and in truth, in heart. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, white as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them up. We know what those tongues were. Because it says in verse 6 that every man was confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own way. God allowed them through the power of the Holy Spirit to speak in the different languages of the nations that were gathered there right. for the Feast of Pentecost 
The great thing about the day of Pentecost was the time you get to the end of this chapter, 3,000 people got saved and baptized. Now, you would, you would read in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18, there are two of the 375 divine imperatives that you find in the New Testament for believers. One of them is don't get drunk. <laughs> That's an imperative in the Greek. The second one is be filled with the Spirit. Yeah. That is not an option. That is not something that's reserved for just certain Christians. Yeah. It's a command of God. Yeah. For you and me to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. In Acts chapter 2, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And Ephesians 5.18, God commands us to be also. We are to receive the same power that they received on the day of Pentecost. Obvious reason is because if we try to serve the Lord in the energy of the flesh, it profiteth nothing. Amen. I want to talk to you for a while tonight. Oh, it's a little while. <laughs> I want to give you at least eight reasons why, and there are many more than that, but I want to give you eight reasons why God commands every one of His children to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I'm cutting through some introduction because I want to get to the heart of the message. Reason number one, why we need to be filled. Be filled means to be empowered. It means to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. When a person gets saved, he receives the Spirit of God in his heart. That's the... That's the... Uh, 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 the, uh, the receiving of what's the word I'm looking for. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But He can He can live in us and not be in control of us. Just like that good young preacher said, there's a choice that has to be made. And we have to yield to the Holy Spirit of God. And when we do, he not only indwells us, but He empowers us. And so His, His power, the very power of Almighty God, flows through us and controls our mind, controls our walk, controls our talk. And here's reason number one why that's so important. I'm going to ask for your uh, forgiveness again tonight. I'm going to have to take this coat off. I don't jump all the cues and run and kick the sawdust as high as I used to. But I'm still a hellfire brimstone preacher and I get hot. <laughs> Reason number one. So that we will be led in the right direction. The Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Romans chapter 8. And we need God's wisdom uh, to help us to make the decisions that we have to make daily in our life. Right. Our life is made up day by day in series of decisions. Some of them we, we do not take seriously, we take lightly, but every decision that we make in life has a bearing on God's will for our life. It is important for us not to be led by the human spirit, but to be led 
by God's Spirit so that we will make the right choices, make the right decisions, and go in the right direction in our life. Amen. Decision determines direction. Direction determines destiny. Yes. We are who we are in life because of the decisions that we made. It's imperative that God Almighty is controlling our mind so that we'll make the right decisions. Reason number two, we need God's power controlling us in order to be able to understand the Word of God. Look, if you would, please, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, we find these words beginning in verse number 9. Let me read verse 9 too. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. How did the Holy Spirit reveal these things to us? By His Word. All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. God breathed. Holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The author of the Scripture is the Holy Ghost. Now he says in verse 12 here, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The author of this book lives inside of us. Amen. And when we yield to Him, He helps us understand the book that He wrote. He goes on to say this. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they cannot, he cannot know he, for neither can he know them because they are spiritually strength. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For what uh, for who hath known the mind of the Lord? He might instruct him. We have the mind of Christ. Right. Yeah. So if we're ever going to understand this book, why are there so many different so-called uh, denominations and different faiths and all of that? Yeah. With doctrine that's, that's contrary one to another. Yeah. Because people try to understand this book without the help of the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. right. And uh, we still have that old carnal age. We still have that old natural mind. So we need the supernatural wisdom of Almighty God to understand this. Right. Amen. We need to be controlled by the Spirit so we'll be led by it. So that we will understand the Word of God. And number three, so we can have an effective prayer life. The Bible says, in Romans chapter 8, the Spirit helpeth us with our infirmities. Do you know what an infirmity is? It's a sickness. Any of you, any of you fellows in the army? A couple of us. There was one place you did not want to go to when you were in good camp. You do not want to go to the infirmary. Yeah. I think that's where the army doctors learned how to practice. <laughs> and you did not want to go there. Yeah. That was the hospital. And they treated your infirmity, your illness, your sickness. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Now the Bible says that we need got an infirmity. Yeah. The Spirit helpeth us with our infirmities. What is that infirmity? 
So we know not what to pray for as we are. We can't even pray right yeah. without God's help Amen. and God's assistance. Yeah. Right? He does two things for us. He helps us with our needs. He helps us when we ask Him to lead us. Uh, he helps us pray in the will of God. Amen. And the Bible says this, that uh, we have this assurance, I think it is, what is that, in 1 John chapter 5, this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us, and if we know that He heareth us, we know that we have the petition that we desire. So when we're praying in the will of God, we know that that prayer is going to be answered. Amen. Because it's not us praying. It's God assisting us. Right. Amen. 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 Next time you want to pray, before you start, say, Lord, help me to pray in your will. Yeah. Yeah. But then knowing that, but He makes intercession for us. So He helps us pray right, and then He doubles that up and He prays for us. By the way, the Lord Jesus prays for us too. Amen. He ever loved to make an intercession for us. Right. We've got two-thirds of the Godhead praying for us yeah. continuously. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, hallelujah for that. Isn't it wonderful? Right. Amen. Amen. Let me give you reason number four. Why you and I need to be filled, empowered, controlled, dominated by the Holy Spirit of God. That's so we would have His power yeah. in our life. You know, if we're not careful, we get things back. Now, I believe in soul. I started winning souls just a few months after I got saved. And I've tried to be a soul in all of my Christian life. September 29th of this month, my wife and I would have been saved 50 years. Amen. And I believe in soul. I believe in getting out of the gospel. I believe in, I believe in witnessing. I got, uh, the preacher knocked on my door on Thursday night, made my wife and I to Christ. Amen. We started going to church the next Sunday morning, being more Amen. Amen. That's why I love TV. Thursday visitation. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what? If we're ever going to be a witness for God, and, and by the way, we're not the ones that win souls. God does that through us. Yeah. And we can use that term, uh, soul. Because the proverb says, He that winneth souls is what? Is wise. So we can use that term, but it's still got to be God Almighty. Did you ever, you ever be witnessing to somebody trying to win the Lord and all of a sudden all kinds of interruptions yep. begin to yep. take place and yep. weird things yep. begin to happen and yep. you feel know, crazy, you know what? Because mm -hmm. the devil doesn't want people to get saved. Right. Right. Yep. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. And we have to have God's power in order to be a soul winner, to have the power to win people to Christ. Right. Now Jesus he made, it, he made it explicitly clear in Acts 1 in this business of soul and power. In order to be a soul man, we first of all have to have this power. Yeah. I read the verse while ago. He said, you shall receive power. Right. 
After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses of me. So before we are making the attempt to try to win you back to Christ, you better make sure that the Spirit of God is in control of our life. Would you agree to that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Power. Oh. They were filled, Acts chapter 2, filled with the power of God. You see it over and over and over throughout the book of Acts. You know, they faced persecution. Yeah. They faced a lot of the things that we face. Yeah. They faced martyrdom. Do you know what? Couldn't stop the church. Amen. Why? Because of the power of God. Then this is almost almost the same. Well, no, wait a minute. That moment for you. Let me give you a fifth reason why you and I need to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. That is so that the fruit of the Spirit would be evidenced in our life. You see, when we're controlled by the Spirit of God, His character flows through us. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible says, the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's that God love. That's the same love that's in the heart of God. That's what He put in your heart and mind. Yeah. Oh, you see, oh, I just have a hard time loving people. That's the flesh. Right. God loves everybody. Right. Huh? Hey, 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 stick this in your pipe and smoke it. You know what God said? Love your enemies. Right. Oh. Right. Right. God did. He loved you and me before you got saved. What we were, what were we? We were enemies of God. Amen. So he put that love. And when he's in control, we, we may not love sin. We may not love what people do. And by the way, since you brought that up, let me just address that. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, it's senseless to get mad at what unsaved people do. Yeah. Right. They, they, they don't know anything. Yeah. 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 See, you've been saved so long, you forgot how the life can be lost. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Saved people are just acting like, I mean, unsaved people acting just like unsaved people do. Right. Can't right. expect people to be. Right. You don't have to love their sins, you've got to love their soul. Right. And then he says, By this shall all men know that you might have you may have love one for another. Yeah. Boy, that would eliminate a lot of ticks in the church. <laughs> yeah. If we just love one another. Yeah. Huh? Right. By the way, since you brought that up, let me address that. <laughs> you know, sometimes our family members can be an embarrassment to us. My wife and I, we raised four, four girls. Got a little boy in heaven. Well, my daughters is in heaven now. But did, did you know that my daughters, our daughters, I had an easy part. She did all the work. <laughs> you know, they were not perfect. Right. They weren't. There were times when my daughters did things that were an embarrassment to me. Yeah. You say, what were some of those things? Uh, <laughs> you think I'm going to tell you? <laughs> but you know what? I didn't throw them out. Right. Yeah. I didn't disown them. Amen. Right. Yeah. I disciplined them. Amen. Right. Amen. But I kept on loving them. Right. Amen. Yeah. Right. 
But we ought to practice that same kind of affection one toward another. Amen. 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 You got people in this church, I don't know who they are, and I don't want to know who they are. They do things that maybe you don't like. I don't I don't want to know what those things are. I, I want to leave here thinking that every one of you are perfect. <laughs> but don't make mountains out of mobile hills. Right. Learn to love one another. Amen. Learn to forgive one another. Right. Amen. Amen. You say, I can't do that. No, you can't. But right. God can through you. Amen. Amen. See, the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit. Joy. First evidence of a person being filled with the Holy Spirit, according to Ephesians 5.19, is singing and making melody in the heart of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm a little bit limited. I'm not able to sing. Every once in a while, I can sing a little bit. But uh, until I get everything. And by the way, just for your information, I am going to get better. I've been telling everybody so far this year, when I'm back next year, I'll be kicking the soccer ball. I may not be playing soccer, but I'll be kicking the soccer ball. So I'm not always going to be just beat up as I am right now. I am going to get better. Amen. But sometimes you can't sing. I don't want to. Just every once in a while. But uh, first evidence of a person being filled with the Spirit, singing, making a melody in your heart of the Lord. Amen. Oh, you say, I can't sing. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can sing. Huh? Amen. It may not be much more than a joyful noise, but that's what he said. Amen. He said, make a joyful noise. Under the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Right. When God's in control of your life, you're going to want to sing about Him. Amen. You're going to want to sing unto Him. Right. You're going to want to sing to other, other people about Him. Right. Amen. 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 Through the Spirit is peace. Mm -hmm. Be careful for nothing but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God in the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, should keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Right. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Yeah. You see, I'm troubled. Go ahead, right. Hmm? right. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, give all something. Right. Give heaven. Right. Huh? He gives the peace. The fruit of the Spirit is long suffering. What is long suffering? That means to suffer, suffer long. Yeah, why? Have you forgot how to laugh already? Come on. Well, what, what does that mean? Patience. Now, now I'll be honest with you, this is the one I have trouble with. I have some trouble with patience. And God knew that in His foreknowledge, He knew that. Way back in the 50s, President Dwight David Eisenhower established the interstate system, highway system in America. Yeah. Now, in case you don't know why, I'm about to tell you. He did it for me. <laughs> because I travel. Yeah. I travel on interstate highway. I, I'm, now, I'm getting to the place where my wife and I will, once in a while, we'll, we'll do a little, we'll get off the main drag and we'll do a little, do a little uh, driving in the back roads and stuff. But normally, I do, I do not drive for pleasure. I drive on purpose. Because I've got some place to be. And I've got a certain time to be there. And I'm on the, I'm on the king's business. 
Amen. And the king's business requires haste. Amen. So if the speed limit is 70, the king's business requires haste. <laughs> so I'll leave him go on the second mile. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I may run 75. <laughs> Why? Because I've got some place to go. <laughs> and I've got a time frame to get there. So, so they organized this interstate highway system. The interstate highway, and this was under construction, Norm has got a minimum of two lanes going in each direction at the same time. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've ever wondered what that left lane is, I'm going to tell you. That left lane is the Hamlin lane. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of the left lane. That's my lane. Understand? <laughs> Every once in a while, we'll get we'll get something behind somebody that has no idea where they're at, where they're going. They, they can't read. They do not know the, the speed limit. They'll get over there in my lane, and they'll make a career out of passing that. <laughs> And there I am. And before I realize it, I'm shouting. I'm not cussing. But if somebody wrote it out, I'd sign it. I find myself. Hurry up! Get out of my lane! Where'd you get your driver's license? <laughs> I'm all over the windshield. <laughs> my wife says, Honey, what about that message on patient show? I don't preach that message anymore! Get out of my lane! <laughs> but you know what? That's not my book. That's the flesh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. He says the fruit of the Spirit yeah. is long suffering. God will help us with that short fuse. God will help us with that chip on our shoulder. God will help us have patience with one another. The fruit of the Spirit is goodness. That comes from a root word, which, which we get the word kindness. I'm going to tell you, <coughs> we fundamentalists, we don't have to run around poking people's eyes out. Right. We don't have to be mean spirit. Right. Be kind to one another. Tender yeah. hearted. Forgive me. Yeah. Even as God, <laughs> for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Why do you say, preacher, you don't know what they did to me, I can't forgive you. Well, yes, you can. You better. You better. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus pray on the cross? For the people who crucified him. Huh? Forgive me. For they know not what they do. And through the power of Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can exercise goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. We, we often we often define temperance as self-control. But the truth of the matter is, it takes the Holy Spirit to control us. Yeah, man. I would, I would rather be spirit-controlled than self-controlled. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Be filled with the Spirit. Reason number two. We need to be filled with the Spirit. 
so that we can have God's supernatural energy pouring through us. I'm not just talking about sowing now. I'm talking about it in the room. I'm talking about it in the words that we speak, the things that we do. That council says they took knowledge of him that they had been with Jesus. I believe in doing things right. Amen. Well, I'm going to We had better not program the Holy Ghost of God out of our life, right. out of our service, and out of our services when we meet. Right. Amen. Oh, how we need right. the power. Right. Amen. Dr. Harold Sight was my, was my friend. We had him in our church years ago. He told me about how when he started, when he left the Southern Baptist and started, started uh, having Uncle Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina. How they prayed for six months for the life. He said, when the Bible came, and talked about some of the things that happened. And he said this. He said, there were some unusual things that took place that caused me to raise an eyebrow. I wasn't sure about it. But he said, I was afraid of it. For fear that it would put the fire. I think, little preacher, that fear is causing fundamentalism to turn into habitualism. That's right. And Amen. Uh, we're scared to death. Yeah. But God's going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I'd rather have Jesus. Amen. And the awareness of His presence yeah. and a manifestation of His power yeah. more than just tradition right. and ritualism. Right. Supernatural power. Yeah. Are you afraid to get your hymn on the sing the song? Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Are you afraid to sing the song? Send the old time power, the Pentecostal power. I'm not talking about Pentecostal. Right, right. I'm talking about the power. Amen. Amen. Supernatural. Don't you want it when you talk to people? Right. Don't you want it when you teach your Sunday school class? Right. Don't you want it when you preach your sermon? Amen. Supernatural. Reason number eight. No, excuse me, reason number seven. He'll give us more. When they prayed, that's chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. Right. I like what that curry had to do that mission. <laughs> 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 yeah. What do you laugh? What are we doing? <laughs> boldness. Right. Not not cockiness, not arrogance, boldness. When they pray, the place is shaken. And they speak the word of God with boldness. I'm afraid to talk to people. You won't be when God's in control. Right. Because He'll give us boldness. 
whatever reason, to be filled and empowered and controlled by the Holy Spirit. So that we can be a fountain of blessing to others. Jesus said, Out of his belly shall, shall flow rivers of living water. This he spake of the Spirit. Hmm? Normally, every fundamental church has at least got a few people you just love to be around. Because of their grace and because of their spirit, right. their love to God. Yeah. They're not down in the mouth, they're not mean spirited, they're not they're not gossiping about others. Right. They're just a fountain of bliss. They're an artesian a, a, a spiritual a spiritual artesian well. Yeah. Yeah. You've been around them for a little bit, you want to talk about the Lord. They want to lift your spirit. When you leave their presence, you feel cleaner. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. I want to be like that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We got enough old sore heads. Right. Amen. We got enough components. We got enough gliders. Right. No, we need some spiritual artisan work. Out of his innermost being. So rivers of living water. Right. Right. Being a blessing to others. Yeah. I'm not like that. You can be. Right. So can I. Amen. When the Holy Spirit is in control. Right. When you say, Brother Preacher, how can I be free? How can I be controlled? How can I be in control? God the Holy Spirit. Well, obviously, you have to have the Spirit, you have to be saved. Yeah. And then for the Christian that wants to be controlled by the Spirit of God, number one, he has to be concerned. Yeah. Isaiah says, I will pour water on, on him that is thirsty. Floods on the ground. He's a kid of hungers and thirst after righteousness shall be free. Yeah. Yeah. I, I gotta be sick and tired of just living in the flesh. Right. Right. And I've gotta have a desire of concern for God to take control. Right. Secondly, I have to be clean. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's not going to fill it with the rest. We have to be empty of sin and self and society. Be totally healed and controlled. Be cleansed by the Spirit. Be ye whole as I am whole. Do I say it for you? Then number three, I have claimed God's promise. He said in Luke 11, if you did not being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Ghost to me than asking? Right. That's not asking for salvation. Right. Because in order to call him your heavenly Father, you have to belong to him. Right. What's he talking about? He's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Amen. So we got to ask and we got to ask for him. Amen. Right. And then, fourthly, we have got, we got to have the right attitude. Yeah. yeah. We got to be consecrated. Totally yielding to him. For his purpose. Who then is willing to consecrate his service this day of the Lord? Back in Chrome, as the question is asked. Mm -hmm. Do we want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit so we can build the biggest church in town? No. That's the wrong motive. Huh? 
So I can be the best soul winner? Wrong. We, we, we have to be we have to be totally yielded to him for his glory. Right. For his purpose. For his fun. Right. Amen. 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 You want to have the invitation? Is there somebody under the sound of my voice? Is there somebody here in this tabernacle? You have a desire to be filled, to be empowered by the Holy Ghost of God. When we start the invitation, would you be willing to leave your place? Would you be willing to come down this one place and all this? Ask God to cleanse your heart. You yield to Him. You come to His promise with the other virtue. Ask Him to fill you with power. Every day of the rest of your life, you ask Him something. You'll see God make a tremendous difference in your life. And he'll use you for his honor and for his glory. When we have his power. Let's stand together. We'll stand together our heads are bowing. But if you need to come and ask God to take total, complete control of your life, you slip back on the